Right, hey folks, so here's a video I didn't think I'd have to make for quite a long time. Um, it's been a few days now since we lost Jeff, and uh, it's taken a few days for me to kind of get my thoughts together. I knew I wanted to do a little video um, about him, just because he's too important to me as a guitar player not to do something. But certainly in the immediate aftermath of you know hearing the news and seeing the immense outpouring of uh, everybody that I seem to know had this huge appreciation for Jeff and everything that he did, seeing all of that was kind of quite hard actually to get through, even though it was all positive. And it was amazing to see how, how much he obviously touched so many musicians and people who weren't even musicians, but just music lovers, really had an appreciation for Jeff. So that was great to see, but I knew that wouldn't be quite the right time to do this. And I wanted to make a video, really, rather than just talking about how, you know, his achievements and how brilliant he is, I kind of wanted to just put across, or try to anyway, what what he means to me. Um, because really, I, I've never heard, I've never heard a better guitar player than Jeff Beck, and I don't see how there could ever be cause for one to come along who could better him, um, in my opinion. You know, Jeff, I, I've kind of always, ever since I've been playing, really, apart from when I was very young and just starting, certainly when I started to take guitar seriously, Jeff was always the guy uh, for me. I just had this kind of um, instinctive attraction to his playing and his musical sensibilities, and I couldn't put my finger on it when I was very young. It's taken years and years of playing guitar and advancing at playing guitar, listening to more and more music that you realise just how, um, not only how technically brilliant he was, but how influential he was as well, you know, how much his influence seeps into so many musicians that are very prominent today. So I guess I'm going to try and distill what it is that I love so much about him and, and his playing. But it's very hard to do, it's very hard to put your finger on it, really. But to me, it kind of represents um, this sense of just freedom as a guitar player. Now, that's, it sounds like a horrific cliche, but when I listen to Jeff play, I'm not thinking about um, what guitar he's using. I'm not thinking about what scale he's playing. I'm not thinking about his rig. I'm not thinking about the key of the song. Uh, anything like that, really. It's just, just listening, and it's, it's like... Uh, liquid liquid art is pouring into your ears that's how i feel about jeff you know he's so um unbound by what we now consider to be typical guitar playing kind of sensibilities he's he was even from when he was very young and, and i really um you know i said i got into jeff when i was at a younger age i guess this was kind of around maybe 2010 so, you know, Ronnie Scott's had, had recently happened. I remember seeing him on the, the Crossroads Guitar Festival, I think, of 20, 2010. And I was lucky enough, it was actually one of the first gigs I went to see was Jeff Beck, with, Cla with Eric Clapton as well, quite a billing. Um, and that was 2010, so, yeah, I was a young guitar player, and just, I mean, imagine seeing that when you're 14 years old. Those two. Um, on the same billing and, and so yeah that was kind of the period that I came to appreciate first of Jeff um, and it's unfortunately it's not really been until the past couple of days that I've delved back into kind of like his his 70s stuff and I was aware of his uh, his prominence in the 70s as well with blow by blow and wired and stuff like that I never really gave it that much attention but he was he was just as amazing back then just in a totally different way and that's the that's the cool thing about him as well is how frequently and authentically he could reinvent himself totally um, and f you know the more I think about it and the more I kind of delve into all the stuff he did musically I realize there's a little little piece of Jeff's enthusiasm and sort of interest in all these different musical fields that has seeped into me and it kind of feeds my own desire just to try new things and not be held up by um, you know, traditions or whatever you want to call it of guitar playing and yet as kind of avant-garde and creative as he could be he was always extremely musical he never played a bad note 
in my estimation. He never kind of pushed things too far and became distasteful uh, just for the sake of trying different things, you know. I guess it's because he always had that blues rooting, that kind of um, familiar home base. And you, know, you can say what you want about Jeff as well as, as being this kind of um, wacky, kind of <laughs> very uh, no-holds-barred kind of creative force of a guitarist. When he played the blues, I don't think there's, I don't think there's, there's anyone better um, at that stuff. You know, uh, even when you were, uh, um, and I'll use the example of Ronnie Scott's, because that gig, if you haven't seen or heard the live at Ronnie Scott's gig from, I think it was 2007, I believe. I mean, that to me is just one of the greatest, if not the greatest musical performances I've ever seen. It has everything. It has a little bit of everything that made Jeff so great. You know, the band is phenomenal on that gig. And then you see later on, you know, the guests appear. You've got Joss Stone, um, fantastic. Um, Imogen Heap, Clap, Eric Clapton, you know, and, and seeing the two of those, those two guys play together. You see the unifying factor is the blues. And um, I like that how you know, whoever Jeff was playing with, he kind of let them shine. You know, it was obvious what Jeff is capable of doing. And yet, whoever his guest was, or whoever he had in his band, he would always make a point of featuring them, and kind of, um, you know, not not shying away, but certainly not taking the limelight for himself. He played in a way that it didn't. he didn't need that, that limelight to be on himself all the time, because if you were watching a Jeff Beck concert, you knew you knew what you were in for on the guitar side of things. He wanted to put across how amazing all these musicians that he got to work with are and were. And that's such a uh, an endearing thing to see. So uh, I'm kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> there's no real form to this video, by the way. I just thought I'd sit down and start talking and see what comes out. So if you're still with me, I appreciate that. But this is just a, you know, a few of my thoughts, really. Um, So, I've got to say, you know, in terms of, it's not been a great few years, has it, for losing musicians and, not just musicians, but all, all sorts of people who are really important to our lives um, culturally. We've seen a lot of them go. I think, you know, 2016 was really the start of this avalanche of just horrible news of people, um, of people leaving us, you know, and I remember being really affected uh, by it by Bowie, losing Bowie, Tom Petty as well, and this one really, really hit home, really hurt. Actually took a while to process uh, the news about Jeff. So that's why this is a few days after all of that happened. Um, I really wanted to kind of collect thoughts before I just started spouting uh, you know, my, my first initial feelings and whatnot. Plus, you know, I, I saw so many amazing posts from people and I learned, I've learned a lot about Jeff and his achievements since, which is unfortunate that it has to happen that way, you know. But yeah, I've certainly garnered even more appreciation for him um, as time has gone on. Just gonna make sure I'm in focus there. I don't think I was. So a couple of things I want to touch on about what I personally love about Jeff is, is not only that freedom that I talked about earlier, but his control as a player. No one else has that. No one else has that level of control because it's so instinctive. You can't really learn that. And I do wonder how he developed some of those techniques, like the holding the bar and operating the volume control and picking at the same time all with one hand. Uh, you don't learn that, really. You just do. So that adaptation must have been just part of him. And that's, you know, but it wasn't just on a strat. You know, you could play amazing guitar on any instrument. It was really, <clears throat> really quite something to watch him play. <coughs> and I was lucky to, I did get to see Jeff a few times. I never got to meet him, which is uh, 
an eternal regret, but I did get to see him a few times. I think, I think three times I saw him. Each time very different than the last as well. And uh, yeah, once again, I said that before, but that's the nature of him as an artist was that you, you, you did not know what you were going to get. And I saw him within, you know, the three times I saw him were within maybe 12 years of each other, each of those gigs. Quite a long time. And yet, drastic change every time in his playing and his, his approach. His, um, you kind of got a sense of his attitude on stage as well, each time. It was a little different. So, uh, what was I saying? The, the control that he has as a player. That's something that really sticks with me, and, and that's something that I've tried to, ever since I really honed in and picked up on that, I've always tried to be very conscious of that, where the control is, is within you. This is all subjective, of course, because it depends on what you're playing and how you're playing it, but that style of guitar playing is really the only style of <laughs> instrumental guitar that I can take too much of, you know, because... It's not formulaic, it's not kind of um, this uh, heavily orchestrated approach, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not my thing. I think once you discover, you know, Jeff Beck spoils a lot of guitar, for <laughs> he spoils a lot of other guitar players for you, when you realise how great he is, um, and how there isn't any of that kind of, um, like I say, formulaic approach to what he played. I I get the impression that, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, maybe he was extremely fastidious in the studio and stuff like that about his parts, but I get the impression that everything he played was just off the cuff. No thought to it, you know, in the, in the best possible way. <laughs> I'm not trying to dismiss his um, efforts in any way, but just, just flowed out of him. Everything was kind of improvised, everything is this linear flow of imagination that just came out of his hands and that's not always you know it doesn't have to be serious you heard a lot of things he would do these little noises and things with the bar harmonics whatever that were funny you know he'd make these strange silly sounds and uh, you know he obviously had a, a great sense of humor as a person and that would come through in his music as well at just the right opportunities um, I also don't think there's any guitar player that plays ballads better. He just had such a dynamic sensibility, and you know, I made the mistake of <laughs> listening to. Um, I think the day I heard the news, I thought I've got to listen to something of his. Big mistake to listen to. Where were you from the Ronnie Scott's? You know, if if ever there was a an emotional outpouring that Jeff put on record. It's that. So <laughs> that was not a good idea. But stuff like that, you know, there's so many tracks, even from that concert alone. Like I said, if you haven't heard that, that will kind of tell you all you need to know about Jeff. Just listen to the Ronnie Scott's gig. There's great authentic blues. There's incredible technical fusion. There's and then there's these most incredible, beautiful, uh, I can only call them ballads, you know, tracks like Nadia, obviously, because we've ended as lovers, kind of the definitive version on that concert, I believe. Um, and where were you? You know, I heard Brian May say that, actually, that that is, you know, his favourite Beck piece, I think he said, um, and would encourage anyone to listen to it. And I say, if you if you can listen to that and not feel some kind of emotion in his playing, more for you is all I can say. Um, so yeah, I don't know if this video really makes too much sense. Um, I also don't know if I've been in focus for most of this video, so I apologise for that. But. It's just a little bit of an outpouring, really, and I appreciate it's a, you know, things move on, but I, I did want to put across how much 
Jeff means to me as a player, and I don't know if my ramblings will have done justice to that, but um, yeah, it's it's very very tough news. And of course, there is always the silver lining that the music speaks for itself and lives on and all of that stuff. But there's something a little different with Jeff because he, he just felt felt so alive as a guitar player, felt so alive as a musician connecting in the way he played. It felt so spontaneous and, and joyful and uh, um, humanistic, I guess that it's now hard to listen to in some ways now that you know he's not around. So this has been a fun video hasn't it? Um, it's not all bad because all I can say you know on, on the positive side is uh, an enormous, I owe an enormous debt of gratitude to Mr Jeff Beck and uh, the way he plays, the way he composed, the way he um, selected songs to play as well because he didn't compose all that much of his own material he actually a lot of the stuff he played was was other people's work that he just reinterpreted um, really quite splendidly so to end it on a positive thank you Jeff and uh, I'm sure many of you will agree and um, you know I, I didn't want to sit down and try and play anything like Jeff. I never want to try and play like Jeff because it's not possible. I just want to take that sensibility that he had of that kind of no no fucks given, if you'll uh, pardon my language. It's that kind of approach that he took that I really like. I happen to really like that. And I'm sure a lot of you do too. So I, I'd like to know some of your thoughts about Beck. I appreciate that you've, you know, we've all come to terms with the news now and, and seen a lot of, like I said, wonderful, wonderful content about him. So maybe it's something that you want to kind of move on from now at this point. But if you've got any thoughts or stories or anything about Becca, I'd love to know them. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I appreciate you listening to me rant and ramble. But yeah, I love you, Jeff. So... Thanks for watching, take care. I'll see you hopefully in another video that's a little happier. Bye bye.